With seven different champions in seven weeks, parity has certainly been the norm on this year's PWBA Tour. For Kim Adler, PWBA title number 15 came at the St. Clair Classic. Last week, it was Leanne Barrett at the Empire State PWBA Classic. The powerful Michelle Feldman won at the St. Clair Shores Classic. Kendra Gaines teamed with collegiate Melissa Brawny for her first victory. Get it. Roll it. Woo! Kara Honeychurch's first title of 2002 came in Mechanicsburg, PA. Yes! Come on! Brenda Norman's first career title came in front of the hometown fans in Come Terre Haute, yes! Indiana. And Kim Terrell started it all off with a victory at the Queens. We visit Liverpool, New York for our last stop on this PWBA swing to look for yet another champion next. on the spring tour. There's been no dominance on the PWBA tour this year, but we may crown our first two-time champion this week, as four of the five finalists have already won in 2002. Ironically, the one still searching for that first title, the one who dominated all of last year, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. And with me to talk about that and a whole lot more is the lady who finished ninth this week, Kathy Dorn Lizzie. Kathy, what about Carolyn? Well, Jan, can you believe it? Last year, we couldn't get rid of Carolyn Dorn Ballard on these telecasts. And she's still the only one searching for her first title of the season. A year ago at this time, she had four victories under her belt. The difference a year makes? The pressure of being the number one bowler in the world. And with that pressure, you become a target. Everyone is out to beat number one, and that's Carolyn. And just as hard as it is to get to the top, it's that harder, much harder to stay there. Certainly is, and I'll tell you what, if, if the crowd has anything to say about it, and we do name a two-time champion this week, it would be Michelle Feldman. She's the crowd favorite, and Kathy, it was exhilarating. How does she handle doing this in front of the hometown crowd? Well, it's funny because Michelle said this was the most pressure she has felt in a long time, and yet having her family here was a strength and a weakness. The strength, of course, because they do nothing but support her great bowling, but the weakness, you always have that mental fear of performing poorly in front of your hometown crowd. Well, that certainly didn't happen. In fact, if position round was any indication of what's to come, look out. Well, Michelle's cousin had mentioned to her that she could possibly move up to third place. Michelle said, I'd have to shoot 300 in order to do that. Because Michelle has a flair for the unbelievable, that's exactly what she did. I can only imagine what's in store for us today with the entire Feldman family in the house. Well, if she would do that again today, that wave they've been doing would become a tidal wave. So grab your life preserver, sit tight. We'll be right back with the first match. And we are ready to go. Michelle Feldman looks like she's ready to go. Kathy, it was interesting talking to her about coming out here and performing on TV today. And her, her biggest nerves were just getting to the show in front of this crowd. Yeah, she said just making the show was was great. Winning it just was. Well, there are a lot of Feldman's relatives, friends, people she said haven't watched her bowl in so many years. She's so excited her mom is here and her sisters and her cousins. This is a big treat for them and what a nice family. First look at Cara Honey Church. We've been seeing a lot of her five shows in just the eight events. Oh, what a terrible 
terrible opening break. Not there was break. a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of that this week. Your ball didn't look like it really was hitting the pins very hard, but it actually was. But until the transition happens, we've seen a lot of seven tens. Kendra Gaines, now also her fifth telecast of the year. She had four in a row in oh. kick. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh. Can you believe it? That is impossible. Good ball roll on Kara. Hit a little flat, though. Maybe just the seven pin. I don't think she deserved the seven ten. She gets the pin, which is important. As we've seen over the weeks, it always comes down to that last frame. It has been coming right down to the tenth. Kendra Gaines now will change balls and shoot at her ten pin. Plastic ball, very important. It's the one ball you absolutely know where it's going. It's going to go 60 feet at least. Now all three of these ladies have already won a title this season. 18 300 games for Michelle Feldman. Now she bowled two this week. Only one of these ladies will survive here in advance. And I tell you what, for Michelle Feldman, I know firsthand from Bowling in Rockford, Illinois, how tough it is to bowl in front of all your friends and family, and you you just want to perform so badly. It, it is, and, and like we said, the strength and the weakness can absolutely be the same thing. Her family is so supportive, but yet you don't want to disappoint them. Now I'm after that disastrous break, leaving just the 10 this shot. Much better shot, more aggressive. here in the second frame and not the shot she wanted to make no and the 910 is not the easiest spare but she also will switch to plastic and that was phenomenal 260 average on the TV pair for Cara Honeychurch how'd she like it she shot 276 257 248 on 27 and 28 this week she was thrilled when they heard that was the TV pair and I'll bet she was Kendra's got a great style. She's so fluid and so smooth. Uh, she just didn't get the ball right enough. Now, on this condition, during the week, you couldn't get the ball right the way we have been previous on previous weeks. But that she kept a little too tight, and that's why she went high. So Michelle Feldman, a little hesitation. Okay, do I bowl? Do I wait? Um, I think she couldn't believe that she actually is in the lead now by 21 pins after just two frames. Yeah. Well, that's why they give you 10. We're just getting started. And I think Gary Feldman knocked it down. I heard him without a microphone. That's Michelle's grandfather. And is it hard, Kathy, for the other athletes here to concentrate? I have to say yes. Uh, not that it's going to take them out of their focus that much, but you always uh, know bowling against the hometown favorite. It's going to be difficult. Because you're battling not only the opponent, but you're battling the crowd. You're trying to keep your focus. Absolutely, and not only that, but let's face it, they don't want you to win. You know, <laughs> they just don't. And that's not a good feeling. But they will do what they can, and many times the hometown favorite does not win. So Kendra Gaines now up in the third frame. Great shot, great comeback shot. You can see Kendra there averaged 216. Great average a year ago. That would have led a tournament. Now, Cara, the 276 car had on this pair, that was actually her high game of the tournament. 260, wow. Now, she's played a couple different lines throughout the week and with a couple different balls. We'll get into that in just a little bit the next time we see her bowl. That wasn't looking too promising, and that's shocking because Cara is an excellent spare shooter. You can see she's battling, getting to the pocket. Barely clips the head pin. Barely gets the five pin. So Michelle Feldman in the lead by 33 over Gaines, 34 over Honeychurch. She has the front three, and this looks like what we saw in position round. And Michelle has such a powerful game. She can overpower the hook. Right now, she's just staying clean, and she looks loose. And look at the emotion coming out of her. She is definitely feeding off of the energy from the crowd, and, and that's when it is an asset. You have to use it to your advantage. 
Kara mentioned she did not have that great of a reaction this week, but because she is so mentally tough and she so knows her game so well, she hangs in there. That's how she makes it. She doesn't do anything drastic, although this week she she did do something drastic by changing lines and equipment, but you really have to be on your game to do that. And I think she just made that switch again because she just changed the shot. Yeah. Another great shot by Kendra. I wouldn't ever count that lady out. So Cara playing in with a little more surface, opening up the lane a little more, and then she had to make a change last night and go more direct. She went to weaker equipment and went more up the boards. She said, I didn't really think my ball looked that great going down the lane, but it got into the pocket. Oh, my God. today. So Feldman's still in the lead by 33 pins as she steps up in the fifth. Don't forget twice. I was just going to say that two 300s this week and a 299. She opened up the week with a 299. Finished the first night with 300. Finished the third night with 300. Incredible. She may start the night with 300. She may. You know, if you shoot two 300s in a round, or in a day, you can shoot a 156. Because <laughs> you're going to pick the pins up. Meanwhile, Cara Honeychurch trying to stay into her game right now. Cara's an extremely hard worker and extremely bright bowler. Great athlete. She now, I think she did what she had mentioned. She went from the stronger equipment and trying to open up the lane to going to weaker equipment with a little less surface and going more up and at it. Very smart. Kendra Gaines on a double. Come on. Really nice yeah. shot. Yeah, you need to stay in this and keep striking. So she is Kendra Gaines with three in a row, still trailing by 33 pins. She's shaking her head right. But there's Michelle Feldman. Five in a row. A lot, a lot at stake for this lady. Halfway there. Well, this young lady is unbelievable. Simple physical game until right there. And that's everything in a bag of chips. I mean, unbelievable power on that young lady. Blows the pins back. There was no chance. Cara Honeychurch, runner-up to Player of the Year last year. This year, she's second in points. to make a few dollars. Need a lot of breaks like that to make a lot of dollars. Exactly. Four-time Team USA member Kendra Gaines came out on tour with a lot of experience, but has found she's had to do a lot of adjusting for tour. Get in life. there! Yeah! She's tough. Yeah, even Michelle mentioned it's a different ball game out here. When you first come out, you learn a few things, but you make the decision to take it serious, and then it's real life stuff, as she put it. So Michelle, no stranger to a 300 on TV. She was the first woman to ever do that on a national <laughs> televised. Look at her, Jan. <laughs> That's she, not the Michelle we knew two years ago. <laughs> she was coming to the booth there. <laughs> That's just beautiful to see it is it is what what a great amount of growth in that woman this lady came out already seasoned you would think she had been on two for five years when she came out here Car oh, so Cara's still coming up light she doesn't look comfortable to me no she leaves a three six seven tough spare Kendra gains 206 average on this pair the lowest of the three. Come on. Yeah. She did really found her own. Whatever adjustment she did was great. I believe she just moved a little left. So Car Honey Church. As I mentioned, the runner-up to player of the year. She'll go for this spare. She has to at this point. Taking one, and as we just said, 
It was July 1997 in Danville, Virginia, when Michelle Feldman stepped up and made this shot. That's become the first woman to shoot a national television 300, and I think that replay jinxed her. What do you think? It might have. I didn't see much of a difference in that shot, but like we said, it's the first match. There are two bowlers on the right side. The transition could be setting in. Just overthrew it just a little bit to the right. Leaves the 2 4 8. And Cara now going back to the ball she was using before, and obviously still just searching out there, trying to, to learn something for the next time she sees this happen. And ooh. That could be costly, even though she threw seven strikes in a row. Kendra Gaines is working on five strikes in a row right now. It's very unfortunate, too, but like I said, she could be experiencing some carry down. Extremely big shot for Kendra here. Because believe it or not, that was a lead change. Kendra Gaines has just jumped in the lead by two pins over Michelle Feldman. We'll be back with more from Liverpool, New York in just a moment. We're back at Flamingo Bowl for the Greater Syracuse Classic. We're going into the ninth frame. Michelle Feldman actually is in the lead by eight. Kendra Gaines would have to strike again to take over the lead as we were projecting out some strikes. Michelle Feldman now in the ninth needs to set this up. And she does. That's why she's here, Jan. She's tough. She has really matured into one heck of an athlete. The physical was always there. She had to work on the mental. Boy, did she ever. back to the stronger ball try to open the lane up a little bit and it's just not working unfortunately no but at least she'll she'll be confident in the fact that she tried everything that she could think of at the time in this game yes big shot right now for Kendra Gaines this to take the lead My roll. Yeah! that is seven in a row for Kendra Gaines like I said, this lady has been hot. Look at how smooth, stays down in her shots, really has a nice long arm swing. There's no doubt about it, but her tempo has gone. She loved it. Our Honey Church took two, and now Michelle Feldman stepping up in the 10th. Her best possible score, 265. Gaines's best possible score, 267 during the week. Feldman beat Gaines 233 to 232, just a one pin match, big shot. Now that looked very similar to her previous shot on the right lane. I do believe now that the right lane is a little tighter. You can see the power in her release, but she's so great at staying on her shots, but it just pushes to the right a little too far. And leaves the 2 8. Cara shooting her 10th frame, just kind of trying to get out of the way. Michelle Feldman really has to pick up this fair. Covers it up. And, and she'll need to strike it all she can. She can shoot 245. It will become a pin count and mark for uh, Kendra Gaines. I can't be too disappointed, Jan. She didn't really have a good look all week. She struggled with a few different ball choices. And she's still going to end up in fourth place. I'd be thrilled with that. This is huge. She needs all ten to really force. And she does. And she definitely made an adjustment. She kept that ball in tighter. Great move. Okay, all we can do is sit back and wait. Honey Church will finish out games. We'll need to strike on the first shot or nine spare strike. 
In order to defeat Feldman, anything less, we could end up in a tie, or it could be Feldman's match. It's unbelievable that after seven in a row, you still need a mark. <laughs> it is hard to believe. But they both had seven in a row at one point. Both had an open frame. It was just where the pin counts fell, where in the frame. That's why spares are so important, and getting the wood on your splits, it always comes down to those pins. So Gaines needs at least nine on this shot. If she would get eight, we could have a tie. Oh, no. Oh. And she, what a break that was. And she knew it, too. She said, oh, no. That was not a good shot off her hand, and she knew it. It was well left to target. She will need a spare and a strike to defeat Feldman. And she's saying thank you right now for that nine count. What the hell Switching is that? Switching to the plastic wall. Oh. Like she was obviously distracted by something that happened. Taking a deep breath, and she'll need all ten. She throws nine here, Kathy. We'll have a tie. Which then would result in a ninth and tenth frame roll-off. Which I didn't ask them, but I don't think either one of them want that. Well, Michelle Feldman will probably take it right now. <laughs> Come on! Get in there! Yeah! yeah. What a great shot off her hand. She stayed down. She followed through. Look at that extension. She couldn't have thrown it any better. And she's shuffled him around and gets the seven. Look at all those pins by the seven pin. One of them had to hit it. She knew it. Yes. What an incredible win for Kendra Gain. She'll advance with a score of 246 over Feldman and Honeychurch. Well, the score hasn't changed. Final score of match one, Kendra Gain's 246 to Feldman's 245 and Honeychurch's 174. So Kendra Gaines takes the next step up the ladder. She'll take on reigning player of the year, Carolyn Doran Ballard, in the semifinal match. back at the Greater Syracuse Classic. Kendra Gaines stepped up in the last match, needing a strike on her fill ball to advance over hometown favorite Michelle Feldman. This was her shot. Need much time. Time. Much Absolute shot there. off her hand. Yeah. Yeah. There was no doubt about she wasn't oh my God. She knew it. Unbelievable. And so it was a one-pin match. Kendra Gaines, what a comeback. After Michelle Feldman starting with the front seven, but she now will be in the semifinal match against Carolyn Doran Ballard. And this matchup on TV has been pretty much one sided. Carolyn Doran Ballard career on TV, four and one versus Kendra Gaines. Kendra's been so hot lately. And she never gives up. Looks like Kendra will start the match. 246 to 245. Interesting, the same as that one pin spread during the week that they had. Unbelievable, isn't it? Get in there. All right. Coming up light right now, Michelle Feldman saying, all right, where was that a frame ago? <laughs> you bet she is. A nice aggressive shot, though, by Kendra. It's really staying down her shots coming through. That's so important because that's the only way you can get a good read on your ball. She comes up light and leaves the same thing, Michelle. Happened to miss that cost her the match, the 2 4 eight. But it's the second match now. We've had some play on the line, so it's transition. She gets away with that one. <laughs> Carolyn Warren Ballard now up after working very hard to come back after that huge year. I mean, hard when you're on top, Kathy. You talked about it. It is hard to stay on top. Hard it to get there, but hard it, to stay there. It is. It's equally as tough to get to the top, but it is equally as hard to stay on top. It's almost um, unbelievable if she wants to compare last year to anything. Last year was a fairy Come on. Yeah. She needs to just keep doing that and showing up every week.
the lane conditions this week. You can see the surface was synthetic, which is a nice surface. Volume of oil, 23.70 milliliters per board. Length of oil, 42 feet, which is a lot longer than we had the last few weeks. And the type of oil is defense. Some weeks offense, this week was defense. The oil held up very nicely this week. A lot of it has to do with synthetics. Synthetics are a very nice surface. And the different oils break down and carry down differently. So yes. that's why they switch many times to get a different look on the lanes. Variety has been the name of the team this week. That's ugly. Yeah, not a very good shot. Five count washout. Another great solid game. Stays on her shots. Really came through that nice. I just think the lanes are tightening up. I don't really think that was that bad of a physical shot. She may have to adjust. She will have to adjust. Carolyn using her strike ball to shoot the spare. Most of the players will do that on double wooded spares. Okay, okay. so that's because the eight pin is behind. Yes. She uses strike ball, so there's enough energy to take out the back. No deflection. Yes, unfortunately, we're not as strong as the Michelle Feldmans to get that back pin. Kendra Gaines now stepping up in the second frame. far not what we saw last game although she started slow last game and then brought it on yes yeah, she did the first two frames were a little slow for Kendra and then she brought it on with the seven strikes right on the face of the head pick. that ball had no chance four seven ten split very makeable switches to the plastic ball come on slide it oh oh, oh. she has and she almost received that was very close Getting the wood, very important. You can take a minute here. Um, Mike McCracken, the proprietor here at Flamingo Bowl, his mother, Lucy McCracken, is ill. And she is in intensive care right now, but she made them bring in a television set so that she could watch this show. So, Lucy, we're all wishing you well. We hope you're out of the hospital soon. And stay with us for the rest of the show. Absolutely. We're thinking about it. Yeah. Great shot to come back with from Kendra. Carolyn Doran Ballard now in the lead by two. You saw our mini scoreboard. That was brought to you by Travel Lodge Hotels. Carolyn's strength this week. Spares and focus. She stayed on her spares and on this condition, you better have or you weren't going to make it. A lot of spares were left. And in the interim, if you're not striking, you have to stay focused. Come on. 10 pin, but a, but a better shot. Well, Much she better. made a good shot on, on the right lane the first time also. Five-step delivery. She slides that first step. Nice and smooth. Stays down. Great release. Just hits a little flat. Like I said, transition. The lanes are probably getting a little tighter. The oil's carrying down, and she, she's going to have to make a little bit of a move, either with equipment or adjusting on the lane. Bears it up, and Kathy, you talked to Carolyn about her slow start this year compared to last year. Here's what she said. In general, I've always been a slow starter, except for last year, and I got into the trap where now this year I compare everything I do to last year, and I swore to myself I wasn't going to do that. So I've reevaluated my goals for this year, and mentally I have refocused where I need to be, and I'm ready to get that edge on everybody like I did last year, and I'm back. She's a threatening young lady, isn't she? She is. Very intimidating. I think that's maybe why she has a 4-1 record against Kendra or some of the other players on television. Come on. And another 10-pin. So she'll have to find a way to kick that out, although at least in the pocket this time on lane 27. Yes, because those two, last two shots were identical, so she's going to have to make a move. Look at her caches, 72 for 72. So that's where all the money is going. Yeah. Right. Easy spare. So that spare will keep Carolyn Doran Ballard in the lead over Gaines by just one pin. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from Flamingo Bowl.
Congratulations to Carolyn Dorn Ballard, who was nominated for an SB Award in the Best Bowler category. Carolyn, who won seven PWBA titles in 2001 and broke her tied 11 PWBA records, is up against PBA bowlers Jason Couch, Parker Bone III, Walter Ray Williams Jr., and Pete Weber for this prestigious honor. Join ESPN for all the awards live Wednesday, July 10th at 9 p.m. That's from Hollywood, California. look at some of the records that Carolyn broke over the 2001 season 18 TV appearances broke that by three record was 15 look at the average on TV games seven titles Wow I made it 217.58 average to a lot of people isn't very high but for 985 games it's awesome and right now she's looking down not wanting to see what's going on and we're back at the Syracuse Classic, Greater Syracuse Classic, inside Flamingo Bowl in Liverpool, New York. Through three and a half frames of the semifinal match, Carolyn Doran Ballard is out in front by one. Over this lady, Kendra Gaines. I'm Jan Schmidt. Get in there. Yeah. And Gaines is taking the lead right here. Well, Kendra could not have thrown that ball any better. She told me yesterday she's learning to make so many better decisions regarding her equipment and how to line up on the lanes. And it's definitely showing this is her fifth TV appearance out of eight tournaments. I mean, her work is t speaking for itself. So Gaines in the lead now by nine over Doran Ballard. Keep an eye on that mini scoreboard sponsored by Travel Lodge Hotels. It'll keep you up to date on who's leading, who's Roll trailing. Roll in there. Max yeah! yeah! Another nice shot by Kendra. Came up a little light, but blew the pins around. That to go up by 19 pins. 16 and 8 in match play for Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Gaines didn't do as well. 13 and 11 in match play, but Dorn Ballard defeated Gaines during the week 225 to 143. Wasn't even close. No. Those bonus pins are very important. 30 bonus pins for every match you win. Yeah, much better shot by Carolyn. She obviously adjusted. Moved a little right, kept the ball a little tighter. Carry out that 10 pin. She slides her first step, pushes away on the second step. Beautiful leverage. Right foot never leaves the ground. Long arm swing. No doubt about it. Picture perfect. But she trails by 19 pins, and now we'll need another picture-perfect shot to take it to nine pins if she strikes here in the sixth. Carolyn bowled great the last day of match play to make it. She said she bowled a lot more calm than she did the day before. Come on! Oh. Well, she made the adjustment, which was the right thing to do, fortunately. She left the split. Well, she pulled so well, as you said yesterday. It was her anniversary, so happy anniversary. Sixth anniversary to Dell and Carolyn Ballard. You could see that ball just jumped right there at the end, right on the nose of the head pin, leaving the 4 7 10. Spare gets the wood. She gave it a run. Talked about how good Carolyn bowled. Here's a look at how all of them. I got to this match. Kendra Gaines, though, look at that start, 26th place. Made her way up, but, but in the top five through all of match play, the final three rounds. Steadily made her way. Dorn Ballard, after the first round, was in, she was in the top five the rest of the route. Good shot. Yeah. Well, she has such a great look. She mentioned, too, that when she loses her look, she has a tendency to force the ball, which may be what she did in that first shot in the 10th frame. But no force here at all. Beautiful extension. It's so important, no matter how long the oil is. Have to stay down in your shots and be aggressive. That's the only way you'll be able to read your ball reaction. So Kendra Gaines now working on four in a row in the lead by 41 pins. Four frames left, though. Anything could still happen. But this looks reminiscent of last game. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Now she leaves right. the 
2-7, which is not the hardest to split, but it's really pretty much crucial at this point in the game. We saw in the first game how things turned around. You heard her say, uh-oh, at the point of release. She pushed it through the break point, came up light, and luckily only left the 2-7. As usual, she'll switch to her plastic ball, go cross lane. Get over there. Hard, Joe. So an open frame for Kendra Gaines, but she's still in the lead by 27 over Doran Ballard. We'll be right back to see who will advance to that title match. Stay with us. Lee Trevino tries to defend his title in this year's R3 shootout. Joining Trevino will be this year's number two player of the year on the PGA money list, Phil Mickelson, five-time Ryder Cup member Fred Couples, and the legendary Arnold Palmer. Join ESPN for the coverage Monday at 8 p.m. and again Tuesday at 10. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. I'm voting for Arnie. How about you, Kathy? I like Phil. Uh, that's because his picture was up. <laughs> I do. I, I, I like Phil, too, but, you know, hey, Arnie's a legend. Yeah. You got to go for the old guy. <laughs> Carolyn Doran Ballard now up in the seventh frame, trailing by 27 pins. That open frame by Kendra Gaines opened the door for Carolyn Doran Ballard. <laughs> she was looking for a big break on that one. Yeah, she wasn't too happy with that. See right there. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't look very sure of where that one was going. She was lucky though, only to leave the six pin. Easy spare. Covers that one up, so it will remain 27 pins. Doran Ballard happy with her position round to get here last night. She's been struggling in that final game, as you see her trailing by 27. She shot a 257, and even though she didn't get back to the lead, she was very happy about that. Carolyn and Leanne flip-flopping positions a lot throughout the evening. Yeah, you always want to leave on a positive note. Her best 2002 finish third in the collegiate doubles. Great tournament. Come on. And she just doesn't seem to have a, a good feel, a good look. No, she seems like she's forcing it a little bit. She's trying to place it. You can't do that. Yeah, she looked very aggressive, but didn't get right enough. Very difficult condition when you can't get loose or lined up. And she's really been struggling on lane 27. When you start helping the ball, it's really no help at all, unfortunately. So Kendra Gaines, fortunate to be here in this match after getting a break in the 10th last game and then taking advantage of it, is, is well on her way here. 27 pins out in front and almost 10 points higher in average from last year to this year. That's how much more well this young lady is going. 10 pin, and that's what we saw Carolyn leave on several shots. Kendra was off to a great start last year, and then broke that foot near the end of the year, came back early. She shouldn't have to bowl, I mean, Doctors didn't want her to, to bowl the U.S. Open. But right back on it this year. Didn't seem to affect her. She's been along eight weeks, and Kathy, you asked Kendra if she's ready for a break. And she is. I actually welcome the break. After eight weeks on the road and living out of my suitcase and beating my body up by bowling, uh, it's just nice to get a little relaxation in for, for a few weeks. No relaxation right now. She steps up in the ninth frame, working on a spare. There it is. Oh, that was a nice shot. Yeah! That was really nice. And I heard her say, there it is. Four-step delivery for Kendra. She really stayed down nice on that, but her acceleration 
through her shots is fantastic. She really wanted that. That was big because now Carolyn Doran Ballard will really has to strike out here. She'll have to strike in the ninth, throw three in the tenth to force Kendra Gaines to mark. Come on. Well, finally, much better. Tripped out that seven pin. Still a little high. But you can see the pin action was a lot better. She got the brakes. Shuffled them around a little, which she needs that. Well, she'll need three strikes right here, one at a time, but the best score, her maximum score, 193. Kendra Gaines, if she would just spare strike, would be at 202, so she'll just need a mark. First things first. Let's see if Carolyn Doran Ballard can line up lane 27. She just found nothing on that lane. It's very rare to see Carolyn go through five frames on a lane and not be able to line it up. And that actually looked like a better shot, but the lanes are obviously going through a change where she just can't get the ball to the right. She very takes, unfortunate. Yep, yeah, takes the three pins and takes her new calming attitude on with her to, to our stop in the summer, our summer tour. Meanwhile, things are going Kendra Gaines' way. They certainly are. Kendra said, though, she had the... She tasted the sweet smell of success, and she wanted more of it. She's definitely going after it. Right now, she has some free shots. Kathy, do you think she'll try anything, or is she that lined up? It, Probably isn't worth it. She's switching balls right now. Probably just to give herself a little more mistake area, see which way she can go. You always want to know if you have a little room left or right. Nice to have a few practice shots in the middle of your game there, right at the end of the game. Especially before the championship match. Advances, defeating Doran Ballard by a score of 209 to 159. Everybody. The first one we come back, Hot Bowlers are fight, fighting to end breast cancer in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. Kendra Gaines, 209 to Doran Ballard's 159. So coming up next, Kendra Gaines tries to stop Leanne Barrett from making it two victories in a row. Here's a look at the beautiful Eagle Trophy that'll be going to one of the athletes in this championship match. There's the winner of the Pro-Am this week, Kim Sabatine, and she received her award from Dave Jordan. He's the regional manager for Aaron Sales and Leasing. They were the sponsor of this Pro-Am, and we thank them for that. Kim did a great job. Leanne Barrett's in the enviable top seed position. All six of the singles championships have come from the top seed this year. That's an amazing stat because they have to come on cold. They do get a, a few shots, like 10 shots, warm up if there's time, but that's tough. I'll take my chances, though. Will you? Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Look for the top seed the next event we have. I'm going to hold to two that year. Great opening shot by Leanne. Defeated Doran Ballard 209 to 159, which means that we will have our first two-time champion of the year in our final event of this swing. Doran Ballard was the only one with a chance to win her first title of the year. Now it's very interesting because Kendra switched balls from the ball she was using in the previous two matches. So that's very interesting. Let's see what this ball does for her. So Kendra won that doubles title with Melissa Brownie earlier in the year. But she only has one singles title, and that title came way back in 1998. Her first year on tour. Yes. Versus Leanne Barrett, who just won last week, but she's going for back-to-back -back titles for the first time in her career, so a lot at stake for both ladies. I thought that was pretty unique. 24 titles for Leanne and never once back-to-back. -back. 
She's led quite a few tournaments in her years. Exactly. Kendra Gaines going high and again. We almost expect it now, the first couple frames, and then we expect her to start striking. Well, like we said, she did switch balls. Great shot on the right lane, but a little high on the left lane. Carolyn was also going high on the left lane. So that could be a little bit of a clue. She's going to have to make an adjustment. She takes the plastic ball to shoot the spare. No problem. Mentioned those 24 titles for Leanne Barrett. That ties her for fourth on the career title list. Of course, Lisa Wagner, 32 titles. Alita Sill, 31. Patty Costello, 25. And right now, Leanne Barrett tied with Tish Johnson for 24. There's a look. Donna Adamick, 19. Nikki, Wendy, all at 19. Carolyn Dorfman making her way up with those 17. And the nine from making its way down just in time. tell by Leanne's reaction when she released it. It was a little high. She did get a break. That pin coming over, kicking out the nine pin, only to leave her the four pin. Well, Leanne Barrett's been on tour a long time, but we still have the rookies coming out. And last year, it was Kelly Kulik who was Rookie of the Year. She had a phenomenal season, and President John Felzone was on hand to present her with her award. Kelly, over the years, I've had the opportunity to watch an awful lot of rookies come out here and bowl on tour. Your performance in 2001 was by far the best that I have ever seen. The players agreed unanimously. They voted you the Rookie of the Year. Congratulations for a great 2001. Well, thank you, John, and thank you for your kind words in the PWBA. You know, you only have one shot at being Rookie of the Year, and last year I came out. I'm very proud of myself for accomplishing such a great goal. And most importantly, I truly would like to thank the women of the PWBA for voting me unanimously the 2001 Rookie of the Year. They are my peers, they are my role models, and I greatly appreciate their vote. They are my heroes. So thank you, John, and thank you to the PWBA You're for so voting welcome. me 2001 Rookie of the Year. Very nice, Kelly, and what a wonderful lady she is. Very polished for a rookie. Now a sophomore, not as successful this year, struggling with that sophomore jinx that sometimes comes about. Meanwhile, Leanne Barrett left a 10-pin spared. Now Kendra Gaines on the nose with a 3-9-10. Going high again. Now, not, not much has changed physically. She might have popped up out of that just a little bit. But I just think the lanes are changing. I think they're breaking down and they're starting to hook and she's going to have to move left or switch balls. And Kendra told us that she does pop up sometimes and she does that when she just lets the ball drop. Doesn't get it moving. Yeah, so when she starts to use her look, she forces it. Which I think that's what Carolyn ran into. Started to force it a little bit and that's no good. Kendra with an open frame now in the third frame and once again we'll have to fight her way back. She trails by 13 pins through three frames. I want to thank the Greater Syracuse Women's Bowling Association. We're just getting such tremendous support out of those ladies as we move across the country. Wonderful to have a volunteer staff. Much better shot. That was a strike on her hand. That was beautiful. This was flawless. Look how she stays down, but her extension is just great. There was no doubt about that, that one. She wasn't going to leave any pins on that. That was, that was great. She needed that maybe to get her confidence back. Leanne Bar Barrett, very proud of the three consecutive shows she <coughs> has made, and she defeated Kendra Gaines during the week. But she said particularly proud of it because it was three completely different conditions, three different fields, which sometimes she has trouble with. But Kathy, you asked her if her focus is different this week, going for back-to-back -back titles. Um, no, it's just like any other tournament. I go in, we have one game, hopefully it'll turn out good. I'm going to give it the best shot I have, and uh, maybe tonight will be the first back-to-back -back titles. 
You know, Jan, I will say, when I was talking with her last night, I found it very ironic that she said, late in her career, she realized to use the variety and the patterns to her advantage mm. to become more versatile. You would think after 24 titles, she would have done it all, but... You're right, but she said she didn't. She always wanted that one field that she oh, liked. She didn't want to accept the field. Yeah. Something different, yes. And work with it, and, and that is so familiar out here, I believe, with everyone. I, I know it was for me. You want the right feel, and it's not always there. Last week, there was a lot of hooks. She had to take her hand out of the ball, stay under it more, and not hook it so much. This week, she could hook it, and to make back-to-back -back shows, possibly win them both. What a confidence booster. They were all even career TV-wise, one and one. Yeah. Overall match play throughout this year. Gaines has the edge, three and two. Our other finishers this week, again, Wendy McPherson and Tish Johnson making a run at the show. Kathy, you snuck into ninth. And in 12th, we have Tiffany Stambro, who came in for Carol Giannotti Block, who had to withdraw due to a reoccurring knee injury. Our thoughts are with her. She's in a lot of pain, unfortunately. And Tinildra Halder, who's working in our truck today from Verbal Linda California. Well, Kendra means business, Jan. Well, the top seeds have taken all the individual titles this season. Will Leanne Barrett continue down that road, or will Kendra Gaines put up the roadblock? We'll be right back to find out. Welcome back to the Greater Syracuse Classic. We're at Flamingo Bowl in Liverpool, New York. And John Felzone, president, was also on hand to award Carolyn Doran Ballard her Player of the Year award. Carolyn, in 2001, you had a year that every athlete wishes that they could have. Without a doubt, you were the best woman bowler in the year and probably the best bowler, period, in 2001. On behalf of the Professional Women's Bowling Association, your 2001 Bowler of the Year Award. Thank you, John. I'd like to thank the PWBA members for voting me Player of the Year. It absolutely was a great year, a year I'll never forget. I'd like to thank John Falzone, John Summer, and everyone affiliated with the PWBA for all their hard work and for allowing me to succeed and have a great career at the sport I love. Thank you. Well, we're halfway through the championship match of the Greater Syracuse Classic from Flamingo Bowl. Leanne Barrett has the lead by three pins over Kendra Gaines in the Greater Syracuse Classic. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Kathy Doran Lizzie. Leanne Barrett now working on two strikes, can take it to 13 with a strike here. Oh, hop, 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 hop. And she does. It's the rubber match of this week's version of the Subway Series as Mike Piazza and Giambi and the New York Yankees tonight. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Nextel at 8 p.m. Eastern. Coverage begins with Baseball Tonight presented by Pep Boys at 7 p.m. Eastern. For more information, as always, go to ESPN.com. Leanne Barrett now in the lead by 13 pins through six frames. Working on three in a row. She can take it to 23 with one more strike here. Kendra looking on. Leanne just wanted us to say hi to Grandma Vale and the family. She's trying to win this one for you, Grandma Vale. That's right. <laughs> She's so loose and confident, and that's a winning combination. Look at how low she is in that follow through. She steers it in. Yes, clenched fist. Go Leanne. She's into this one, Kendra Gaines. Equally into this, working on three in a row. She's in the seventh frame. Kendra is unbelievable. Takes that deficit right back to 13, and with one more, she can get it back to three pins. And this is the second match that she started slow and has followed it up with at least four strikes. Best Leanne Barra could shoot, 269. Best Kendra Gaines, 256. That would be their maximum score if they strike out. 
Now, even though Kendra switched balls, that's telling you how on she is with her game mentally and physically, because she's bowling just as well with another piece of equipment. Very important. Great shot. Wow. <laughs> Look at me. I'm Kendra Gaines, and I'm here to win. She's not going anywhere. You know, we were saying before, Leanne is a field player. And she's another one who's learned to make better equipment choices. Her weakness, though, is always getting comfortable early on in the blocks. Timing issue. And she's here to back to that title, so it's very really And last week, she came up in the 10th, and she needed a strike, nine spare to defeat Wendy McPherson. Had a strike on this first shot. She sure trusted that one and now needed at least nine pins. Nine and had to spare. She looked around for a while last week. Okay, do I need it? Do I need it? Yes, you do. You have got it. Yes, to defeat Wendy McPherson, 237 to 236. Right now, she leads by 13 pins. It could come down to the wire again this week. <laughs> she was not too happy with that. She knows it was lucky. What a break. And what a time for it. She came out of that one a little quick. Knew it wasn't a crisp shot. But look at the pin action because of the rotation she gets on her ball. Oh, yes. And then a big deep breath. I'd be taking a deep breath after that also. Kendra right there. You know, Jan, looking at their scores, it's, it's unbelievable that they have to continue to strike in order to stay on top. Gaines trailing by 13 pins with that strike. She won't be able to close out Leanne Barrett. Best she can shoot, 256. Leanne Barrett could still shoot 269. Who put the ice water in her vein? <laughs> wow. Again, stays down. Beautiful follow through. Really clears the front part of the lane nice. You just don't throw it any better than that. And Kathy, she told us last night, in that doubles event, she tasted victory again. And she wants more of it. Comments like that come from true champions that love to win. That was a great shot. She has nothing to be disappointed about. Very good shot. Looked identical, maybe a little bit, not, not as secure in the pocket as the others, but still it could have went. Great performance by Kendra. Spares it up for 245. Leanne Barrett now stepping up, working on six in a row. She will need a mark. Her pin count important. this because she was working on two strikes there's a lot of scenarios that would have worked another great shot she really gets that ball to the right makes that turn left <laughs> she wasn't too pleased with it but she left a 10 pin okay she needs this 10 pin 
and then she will need eight pins. Needs the spare first. Gets it out, her hand covers up, and now eight pins. If she gets seven pins here, we would have a tie. Eight pins or more to win the match. Putting rosin in her thumb hole, she will wipe that off the surface of her ball. You can hear her taking a deep breath. Kendra Gaines is going, I, I, wow, I just, she believes she'll get eight. She hasn't had less than nine the entire match. those eyes back to back titles so Leanne Barrett captures back to back titles with a score of 248 to 245 over Kendra Gaines she becomes the first two time champion of 2002 we'll be back to talk with her stay with us There's your champion of the Greater Syracuse Classic, and Nick Pirro, county executive, coming in to give her a check. Yeah, congratulations. It was a great Thank week, you. and what a great finishing game. Thank you. We're glad that you're the champion of our Greater Syracuse Classic, and we have the winner's check for you. Thank congratulations. You okay, Thanks. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back from Onondaga County, and now coming in with a trophy, Mike McCracken, the proprietor here at Flamingo Bowl. Congratulations, Leanne, on a great week of bowling, and you put on quite a clinic this week, and uh, you can really make those spares in the clutch. Oh, jeez. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Handle that one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would just like to thank um, our sponsors, Travel Lodge and WIBC. I'd really like to thank my ball company for making the Vortex, too, because it got me through tonight. Um, I would like to thank everybody here in Syracuse. If I could have wanted one person to make this TV show, it would have been Michelle Feldman, but thankfully I got the leftover cheers from her family. So I really appreciate them coming out and everybody else here tonight too. Thank you. Kathy, you have a question for Leanne? Leanne, for the first time after 16 years on tour and 25 titles later, it's your first time back-to-back -back wins. What does that mean for you? Oh, you know, I'm not sure that I really am thinking about that. I'm, my mind has been a little bit blurry lately, but um, I, I've, I don't, I'm just nervous. I just, I'm, I'm, Kendra bowled a great game, so, and she just kept putting the pressure on, so I knew I had to keep up, but, um, I don't know, I really, it hasn't really hit me yet. Do you know it's title number 25? 25 is good, yeah. I, uh, I'd like to say hi to my nephews, Cooper and Austin, because I know that Austin was doing his whammy dance at home, so I know that that had a lot to do with it tonight. How do you like this trophy? I know you have a horse before, but now you have an eagle. I'm collecting the, uh, Bob Reed will love this because he's, he, he loves the cool trophies and um, collecting the animal trophies. So this is wonderful, and I'd like to thank everybody here today. Okay, Leanne, well, congratulations again, and we will be right back to talk to you again in just a moment. Please stay with us. champion Leanne Barrett who's ten thousand dollars richer Kathy Leanne you mentioned to us that you're so proud of the fact that we've had a lot of versatility in our lane conditions over the last eight weeks and you've managed to lead tournaments and win them and that's a big victory for you personally how do you feel uh, it feels great I made a lot of changes uh, with the coach at home Rod Ross and changed my stance to help my hip a little and he gave me some suggestions for my release to better my leverage and the combination of those helped and also talking to Dean the last few weeks really helped a lot and, and my concentration is, is really getting a little better so hopefully it'll continue it. So congratulations again to Leanne Baird who is now tied for third in career titles with 25. <laughs> Join us Monday, July 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern for the finals of the Dallas Open from Don Carter West. You'll find us on ESPN2. 
stay right where you are for Sports Center. That's coming up next. For Kathy Dorn, Lizzie, I'm Jan Schmidt. We hope you enjoyed the live Sunday broadcast. We certainly did. Have a great Independence Day, but please make it a safe one. So long from Liverpool, New York. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.